Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Caterpillars Digging Into History. I'm your host, Rusty Dunn, alongside Corporate Heritage Archives Manager Lee Fosberg. Lee, good to see you. Good to see you again, Rusty. Today, it can be said, Lee and I are both outstanding in our field. In our case, a farm field, and for good reason with the story we're about to tell you today. Rusty, this is a story that begins and ends on a family farm in central Illinois. It revolves around a very important machine, the 20,000th diesel machine to come across the assembly line in 1936. And as you see, it's a detective story, it's a rescue story, but most important, the things you and I love is, it's an adventure story, a history adventure story. This 20,000th machine, a milestone piece of equipment. In a minute, we're gonna introduce you to a gentleman by the name of Chuck Ehler. Chuck's a retired farmer, lives on the family farm just outside of Champaign, Illinois. He loves finding and restoring old cat equipment and owns a number of vintage machines today, as you're, as you're gonna see. But Lee, there's one machine that rises above the rest in terms of how important it became to Chuck and his family. And, Actually, how they almost lost it forever. So set that up for Sure. Me. So 1936, right in November, the 20,000 diesel machine came off of the assembly line. And you kind of have to really go back to 1931 when our first machine went off the line. And really within those five years, we became an industry leader. But the company wanted to celebrate that machine. And so it was purchased by Chuck's uncle. And he remembered the machine even as a kid. And then later in life, right, he becomes a master collector. And it becomes his dream, almost his obsession, to bring that machine into his collection. Well, it, Chuck's uncle, John Ehler, had, a, had the machine for a number of years. It did great for him. Then he decided to uh, get something different, sold it to another farmer. Decades later, Chuck puts on his detective hat to try and find that original machine. They heard about five old Caterpillar machines, old five cat dozers sitting out in a farm field, actually about 25 miles from where Chuck was located. So what do they do? They decide to buy, you know, we're not sure which one might be which here. Let's buy all five machines and lo and behold, they get them home, they think they found the one. So we brought this one home. Uh, we used a process with a water hose and uh, uh, a steel wool, fairly low tech. And we rubbed some of the paint off the fuel tank and we could see the letters below that said 20,000 Caterpillar diesel. We stopped right there. We knew we had a home run. We had the right tractor. We went from the radiator to the rear of the tractor and disassembled the whole tractor. I mean, there's no nuts and bolts that haven't been removed and replaced. New clutch, new seals, new rear sprockets, new chains, all Caterpillar parts. Caterpillar later featured the machine and the Ehler family farm in advertisements, promotions, and brochures. In fact, one famous photo of the Ehler's RD4 showed how less than a bushel of soybeans bought enough diesel fuel to operate the tractor for one day, able to harvest 30 to 35 acres per day. Caterpillar really treated them well because Caterpillar came out for the first year and took many, many pictures of this tractor at each season. So we see them combining, we can see them plow or working ground or all the things that this tractor is supposed to do, and I did them all well. It was really good on fuel, and if you'd have known my Uncle John, uh, a dollar meant a lot to him. And if you could save two dollars a day on fuel, he's all for it. So here's a fun fact. Chuck's cousin, Glenn Miller, and here he is standing next to the machine, now well into his 90s, saw this tractor when it was brought back to the farm, brand new, he actually got to operate it. And Lee, all these years later, if there was still any doubt about whether this was the actual machine, something else they found that convinced them this was the one. That's right, Rusty. Before the RD4 left the factory in East Peoria, there was a metal plate attached to the dozer, and that helped confirm the special status as number 20,000. Well, when this tractor was new, before it ever left Peoria, Caterpillar made an aluminum plaque, and it had all the names and the dates, everything on there, and address even, and they screwed that to the front of the right side of the engine block. 
Now, I will tell you a little secret. Nobody in the whole world knows this but you and me. This is a counterfeit uh, plaque. We have the original plaque in a file, but it's so valuable, I'm not gonna let it out of my sight. And Lee, when we talk to Chuck, he gives credit where credit is due to the people who made the RD4 possible. Rusty, this machine was so impressive for a number of reasons, including its engineering. When you think about a 1936 tractor, like the one behind me, think about the guy that designed that. He had a board, a T-square, a piece of paper, and a dull pencil. And he designed that tractor that's working perfectly 85 years later. Somebody needs to give some of those old engineers a heck of a lot of credit. Caterpillar is a unique company. Caterpillar does things the way I do things. So when you get a piece of equipment, you don't have to say, oh my God, what's going to break? But when we fire it up in the morning and it's fueled up and it's checked over and it's ready to go, I want nothing to happen during the whole day. And tomorrow morning, I want the same thing. And Caterpillar can do that for you. Well, Lee, as we wrap this story up, talk about a guy who lives and breathes Caterpillar history every day. And I know if Chuck could spend every day on that little D4, you know he would. You know, Rusty, it's such a good story and the labor of love for Chuck and his family. And he tells us it won't end with him. When you put this back together, that's about as fun as it can get. I mean, you know, you're really actually creating something and this thing is gonna have a life and this, this life is going to, going to be here long after you are and other people are gonna say, I wonder what he was thinking about. You know, what are the remarks of the next generation or two? I'm more interested, I'd, I'd, I'd love to come back and listen to them and say, Grandpa was nuts or, what a good idea, you know, I don't know what it'll be.